Hey everyone, how is it going? So, might be a bit of a long intro, so I'll put a timestamp at the bottom if you want to skip ahead. But, uh, too long didn't watch, we're doing mid games, woo! <laughs> Longer version. Matthew, ages ago, you asked about mid games. And I think you even gave me like a fiver super thanks. And it is played on my mind ever since that I haven't made the video. I've tried, but it's just, it's it, like your mama, it's just too big. There's so much to cover. I've decided to dedicate an entire series to it. Working through all the kind of key concepts, looking at some GM games and analysing their positions, looking at what they do, all the major things, you know, like improving pieces, pawn play, exchanges, prophylaxis, finding weak squares, all that good stuff. So, Matthew, this is for you and only you. But like everyone else, please stick around and um, watch because I really need to get my watch hours up. I really want to be paid for this. So, um, oh, and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Um, <laughs> that'd be nice. Uh, right, anyway, let's get into it. Right, so we're going to be start by looking at improving the pieces. Now, this is a big concept in and of itself. And it's probably going to take a few videos just for this, but I really want to hammer it home. It's super important. Now, we're going to start by looking at a game between Chuchilov and Georgiakev. I feel I said that wrong. Now, it is black to move, but let's have a little look at the position and compare it. Now, you can clearly see white is in the better position here. They have both of their rooks connected and on the open files staring down like so, whereas black's rooks are just kind of... At the side, not really doing too much. They're not connected because this horsey's blocking it and the horsey isn't in play. If we look at the pawn structure, white has the two pawns here, whereas black only has the one. And that is super important when it comes to the end game for when you're making that kind of final push to promote the pieces there. This pawn on the a6 is a bit of a weakness as well. Yes, it's currently kind of protected by the queen and the rook there, but if the queen and the rook want to start getting into action, this pawn's going to end up just kind of like on its own there, and it's being stared at by this bishop, and he's desperate to gobble it up. Now, it's not all doom and gloom for black. Let's flip the board. Uh, we do have the queen and the bishop staring down at this g2 square, and that's a definite danger for white there. Um, and yes, they have this, but they're not really kind of staring it too much there. Um, we do have our bishop in a very nice position here. It's working in a defensive role, you know, protecting this g7 square, stopping any shenanigans like this, which is not what we need. And it's kind of staring down like this, staring at the horsey there. So... That's kind of our position. Now, Black really needs to improve his pieces to get into a better position. So, let's have a little think of what the best move is going to be. So, what's the main problem for Black's position here? It's this horsey. This horsey is just in the way. It's not doing anything. And it's stopping us from connecting our rooks and getting them more into action. But how are we going to improve the piece? Because if you have a little look... This position's covered by all of this. This position's covered by the same. How are we going to improve it? How are we going to get it into play? And also get our rooks more into play? Well, there's a very simple yet elegant move of g6. Now, g6 is a great move. What it does is it allows the horsey to hop up to here, to the g7, with plans of eventually hopping up here to the f5. Now, when it's here on the f5, look at all the squares it's going to be covering absolutely amazing position also once it's out of the way our rooks are then connected fantastic move now we don't have to worry about the bishop coming down like so staring because we can just carry on with the, uh, the horsey if he does take it it doesn't really matter because we can just slide back with our bishop and look at the position now you can see analysis bar slightly in our favor the bishop in a lovely defensive position and attacking position there. The queen's lost its dark square bishop, which really was its dance partner here. Um, we're just, we're in a better position. We can start getting the rooks out. We're still threatening this. Things are just better for black. But white didn't elect to do that. Instead, white went for a very kind of defensive move of bringing back the bishop like so to the f1. Now, it's an okay move, you know, it is defending this pawn here on the G2 because we are still threatening this, but it's a very kind of passive move. And watch the analysis bar at the side, it's very much reflected in that. Now, there was a better move for White, which would be bringing the bishop across to here. Now, there'd be no point in us taking that exchange because it doesn't benefit us in any way. You know, we can still, like, swing the horsey around like so, and that would be fine. 
Uh, we're not in a terrible position or anything like that, but I don't like that we're open. The Queen's got, you know, like, plans of getting around here, stopping the uh, horsey from getting there. Like I say, we can go that way, but um, a better move for us instead of doing the exchange really would. We could drop back to either square, really. Let's just say we drop back to here, then the bishop comes to here, um, and then we can push forward the pawn, try and get the bishop out the way. And we're in, a, again, we're in the similar kind of position as we were before. You know, we're still about a 0.5 or 2 white there, so... Uh, we're actually much better off that instead he elected to go for bringing the bishop back like so. So we've made room for the horsey, so we might as well utilise it. Horsey jumps up to the g7. Now the rooks are connected and get more into play. And the horsey's still dreaming of jumping up to here, covering all of these squares. It's absolutely beautiful. And clearly that's probably going to be the next move. Now... White made a fairly unusual choice here and came across to here on the e3. Now, yeah, they're kind of connected like so, but it's it's a big loss of tempo because clearly this horse is about to jump up, and it did, like so, threatening the queen, forcing the queen to move. So the queen moved back to here on the h3. Now, you can see that analysis bar there just dropped right down. I can see what they're planning, you know, getting these guys involved, but the queen's just kind of out in the middle of nowhere and black has no issues at all he can start getting all of his pieces into play and he chooses to do so the f rook comes across to here onto the d8 the rooks are now in place staring each other down wanting them to go ahead and take he's not going to because if he does analysis bar clearly jumps back up and now we have control of this open file so it doesn't make any sense at the moment for the rook to take and if you look, in just four moves, the position has changed so dramatically, all because black improved their pieces. This g6, wonderful, just allowing the horsey to get involved. Horsey getting up to this really key f5, controlling so much room, and then being able to get the, the rook into action. The bishop still staring down like so. Absolutely wonderful position for black now. Now, white does need to be careful here. If bishop went ahead and took the horse, he clearly couldn't take back with a bishop because our uh, rook would go ahead and just gobble up his. Then it would be on the back rank. Or alternatively, if we took, he took there. We did the exchange. He came down. Our rook could then get back up there. Again, pinning the bishop there. Then our queen could start getting involved, looking at a mate in one. We could threaten all kinds of shenanigans. So instead, he goes for this. The rook to the d3. Connecting these guys together, also looking at bringing across the other rook, maybe getting a bit of a battering ram on the go there. And from here, black plays the stunning move, just pushing forwards the pawn up to the e5. Now, he's got plans of attacking this rook like so. So, in this case, the bishop came back to here, onto the d2, pawn pushed forward, rook has absolutely nowhere to go along here. So, forced to take, we take back. And now we're controlling this open file here. And it is 1.1 in our favour. That we're threatening the bishop. It's just, it's such a winning position here. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll leave it here because I don't want to start going into the end game. It was mainly just how, showing how improving the pieces just with such a simple move, like so, changed the game entirely. So like I say, we went from a 0.5 advantage, a uh, disadvantage, sorry. We recognised what the problems were. And the main problem, the horsey had nowhere to go and it was stuck and it was blocking in the rooks like so. So a simple move like this g6, allowing the uh, horsey to jump up like so, just completely changed the face of the game. Uh, we'll look at another example of a mid game. Um, and again, it's going to be improving the pieces. So here we have a game from 2006 between Bujikevich and Kritz. Again, sorry for pronouncing it wrong. It is white to go. Let's have a little look at the positions. Both castled off to the king's side there, nice and safe. We're pretty much fresh out of the opening here. They do have their rooks connected, ours aren't, and we have this bishop who's just kind of in the back, not doing too much. Now, clearly, we want to be developing our minor pieces first, so really, we need to be doing something with this bishop. But let's have a little look at the diagonals that we have for a choice. What looks like a natural move coming up to here on the g5 there, it's just going to be met with the h6 and, you know, we're just moving the bishop, then we've got to move it back, which isn't ideal. If we go ahead and do the exchange, that's terrible because now we're met with this. We've got to move the queen out of the way. 
Um, so that's no good. The other diagonals are really no better. You know, if we come to here, we're just met with this, which is just blur. And then we come down. If he takes, then it's just, it's not very good. Um, if we come to this diagonal, we're not really doing anything along here. And again, we're just met with this. Um, so that's no good, really. And this is just, I mean, oh, what's this? This is, <laughs> this is, this is nothing. That's not doing anything. Uh, it is connecting the rooks, but again, it's not ideal. Um, so what we need to be doing is making a new diagonal and coming up with a new plan. So we have this queen who's nicely situated here, you know, very commanding along this. If we could connect the queen and the bishop along that way, that would be beautiful. So a nice, simple move, bringing the pawn up to the b3. So simple, but it's connecting the pawns along here. It's allowing the bishop to get here, improving the piece. And that, hey, that's the name of the video. Um, and we'll be able to connect them along. So pretty much pinning the horsey there. If the horsey was to move when, you know, our horsey's out the way, we're just going to be getting a mate in one there. Beautiful. So let's continue on. Now, black has a couple of choices. You could just go with something like the C6, you know, uh, looking to pile on pressure in the center there. Also, you know, gives a little bit more movement for the bishop. And also, if he brings back the horsey, gives a little bit of movement for the horsey as well. Um, and from here, we would just continue on, get out our bishop, looking at threatening this. Horsey could jump back. Like I say, that would be protecting this pawn here from this barrage. And it, like I say, he's got some nice movement there for later on. Uh, bring across the rooks. He could get out his queen to here. Now, you might be thinking, why not the bishop like so? Terrible move, because we could just push forward the pawn. And if he was to go ahead and take, we take back. We're now getting the bishop. If he takes, we're also getting the queen. And we're just, like I say, we're 4.4 up from that position there. So instead, something like ooh, bringing out the queen, we bring out our other uh, rook there, kind of staring down like so. Um, and from here, it would play out fairly well. It's a fairly good game for both black and white. Slight advantage to white. But anyway, instead, he went for bringing across the... Ooh, bringing across the rook to here on the f8 there. So um, continuing on, clearly we are going to get out our bishop like we planned, trying to dominate this entire diagonal. So bishop drops back into a more defensive position, probably one of the better moves, really wants to try and keep this g7 square safe from this. And from here, we just keep developing out our pieces. So what are we going to do? Get the rook, team it up as a battering ram like so, getting it on the open file. Brilliant, makes the most sense, doesn't it? And from here, uh, queen came out to here, onto the c6. Now, if any of us were thinking, like, maybe go for the fianchetto, you know, pushing forwards this, watch the analysis bar. Wank. It is game over, because this absolutely destructive move of bringing up the horsey like so. What's he going to do from here? Absolutely nothing. If he was to go ahead and take, that is just game over. If he was to try and defend like so, we can just go ahead and take... If he was to take back, again, it's going to be game over. There's pretty much nothing he can do from this. 9.1 in our favour. Uh, alternatively, he could move the king out of the way. But clearly, we're just going to grab the queen. Yes, he can get ours. But once we take back, put him in check. His only move is to here. Horsey then jumps across. He moves across. Then we gobble up this. And it is just catastrophic for black. I'm um, sorry, it was just a fun little line that I just wanted to show you there. So instead, he decided to. Is someone phoning me? Popular. Suspected spam. Wank. Sorry about that. Um, right, sorry, where were we? Oh, right, yes. So instead, he brought out the queen to here, c6. Now, whenever we're playing, we always have to be looking at our weaknesses. Clearly, this pawn is a weakness for us. There is a lot staring down at it. So normal developmental move and adding in the extra layer of defense would be to just bring across the rook like so. Makes the most sense. Now he goes for the move of the a6. Reason he's doing that is because he's planning on bringing across his rook into action and he doesn't want us just getting in there gobbling it up. So he's just making that as a preemptive move there with plans of bringing this across later on. Now, like I say, there's a lot going on with this. So white decided to push forwards the f3. Um, like I say, just adding an extra layer of defense there, and as we knew he would, he brings across his rook like so. Now, we move the king out of the way, and main reason for that is just 
we have this big attack going on here. That's clearly what our main attack's going to be. We're going to be hopping the horsey out of the way and looking to try to get into this. So if the queen was to come across to somewhere like there, pinning our queen, forcing the exchange there, kind of ruins our plans. So just moving the king out of the way is the main reason for that. And from here, white started launching their attack. So g4, uh, pawn comes up to g4 like so, and he's looking at the g4, whoop, g4, g5 trap. So let's just say black makes a nothing move. Then this horsey is completely pinned in. He has absolutely no way he can run to there. Um, so from there, pawn comes down and then rook comes across. Again, looking at just being able to smash forwards like so. Horsey drops back, other horsey comes up, and you can see the main plan from here. We're threatening all of this, we've got all this going on, pawns threatening coming up, if that gets taken we've got the rook there. We'll leave it here because this game goes on for ages, I think it was like 52 move game. Um, but I really just wanted to show you how white's come up with a plan and slowly started improving the pieces. Clearly, from the start, this pawn was always the main target, and they've just moved their pieces across, slowly improved all of their pieces to carry on targeting this pawn here on the g7 there. If we bring it all the way back to the start, it all started with that very simple move, h3. We decided right away from the start, we're going to be looking at this diagonal here, and piling on the pressure onto this pawn. Like I say, everything along this diagonal was a no-go, and it would be very, very natural to choose one of these, but from here, just every move was with purpose, you know? Gets along there, slowly starts developing out the pieces, getting the rooks into action, protecting any of our weak pieces, and then just slowly rerouting uh, the pieces, getting them into a better position there. Absolutely fantastic, and even just from here, this is move 18, and it's nearly a two-point advantage for us. All because we had an absolutely amazing plan, and just slowly improved the pieces. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed making it. I know it was something a little bit different, but like I say, mid-games is so much to look at, and I think just looking at just loads of games from GMs will really help improve your game, and one of the main reasons I want to do it as well is it's going to really help improve my game as well. I'm a little bit rusty at the minute after having that, like, what, six months hiatus, so this will be really handy for me, but like I say, it'd be good for you guys as well. Uh, Matthew, I hope you enjoyed it. This was for you. Um, these uh, games have been taken from the book Master and Open and Strategy by Johan Helsen. I recommend everyone checks it out. Absolutely fantastic book, and it really, really helped my mid-game. Um, yeah, if you liked it, uh, please drop it a like, really helps with the algorithm, subscribe if you really like it and you want more stuff like this, and um, pop down a comment um, just because it helps the algorithm, even just saying, that person who always comments chess, thank you, I do appreciate it, it's a bit odd, but it helps with the algorithm, so <laughs> keep it up man. Uh, right, I'll catch you dudes later.